What is the history of the Portuguese Empire and who were the key players involved in its formation? Let's find out in today's episode of the History Chronicles. Hello, I'm Alex and welcome to the History Chronicles. If you like our work, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel in return for exclusive perks, please visit our Patreon page. Now, on with the video. Today's History Chronicle begins in early February 1488. In the early days of that spring, a Portuguese mariner and explorer by the name of Bartolomeu Dias led an expedition, which had been financed by King John II of Portugal, to Mossel Bay in southern Africa. He did not know at the time, but they were the first Europeans to round the tip of Africa and stare out into the Indian Ocean. It was the culmination of 70 years of incremental exploration of Western Africa by the Portuguese. In the decades that followed, the small Iberian kingdom would build a great global empire, running from the Amazon rainforest in Brazil to the Spice Islands of Southeastern Asia. This is the story of the Portuguese Empire. The Portuguese Empire emerged during the 14th century, when a number of Western European countries began venturing further and further out into the Atlantic. Spanish sailors were charting the western shores of the region, now known as Morocco, while to the north, Scottish and English fishermen were searching for fisheries further out into the North Atlantic. Yet, from amongst these players, it was the small kingdom of Portugal which would emerge as the foremost maritime power of its day, when, beginning in the early 15th century, a series of explorations were undertaken to find new lands down the western coast of Africa. Historians generally agree that one of the most crucial figures in these early explorations was a man known as Prince Henry the Navigator. Born in 1394, Henry was a son of King John I of Portugal. As the fourth son of the king, he would never succeed to the Portuguese throne, and so he consequently dedicated his life to overseas exploration. He invested heavily in expeditions exploring the coast of Africa south beyond Cape Bojador, which lay on the African coast, not too far south beyond the Canary Islands, which had recently come under Castilian control. Henry's continuous support of Portuguese exploration missions between the 1410s and 1460s led to many discoveries. Madeira was reached in 1419 and quickly became a lucrative colony, where sugar was produced. The Azores were discovered in 1427, while in 1456 the Cape Verde Islands were reached and quickly settled. Then, shortly after Henry's death in 1460, the Gulf of Guinea was being explored, while in 1473, Bernal Gomez was the first European to reach the equator. Diogo Cao explored the mouth of the Congo River in 1482, and in another expedition a few years later, the same explorer sailed as far south as Namibia. Just two years later, Diaz rounded the Cape of Good Hope. The Portuguese had now finally rounded the southern tip of Africa after 70 years of expeditions. But why were they doing this? It wasn't just for the purposes of exploration. Their goal was to find a naval route to Asia, and in particular, to the spice-producing regions of the Moluccas, around modern-day Indonesia. The spices, such as nutmeg, cinnamon and pepper, which were produced here, were worth more than gold by weight in Europe. And the trade of such spices into Europe was completely in the hands of the Muslim powers of the Middle East. If the Portuguese could find a new route to India and the Far East and control it, it would bring them great riches. It is hardly surprising then to find that the Portuguese pushed on further after rounding the Cape of Good Hope. In 1497, Vasco da Gama left Portugal and became the first European to reach India by sailing around Africa. A number of further expeditions by da Gama, Francisco de Almeida and Alfonso de Albuquerque in the ten or so years that followed led to the Portuguese gradually building up a presence in India and the Indian Ocean. And then in April 1511, Albuquerque finally reached the holy grail of destinations when he sailed to Malacca in Malaysia, the gateway to the Spice Islands. After a hundred years, the Portuguese had reached their ultimate goal. Portuguese explorers funded by the crown now began returning to Europe with cargoes of spices and other exotic goods that fetched small fortunes when they were sold on the European market at major trading centres such as Antwerp. As they did, Portugal was transformed from a small, relatively poor kingdom on the periphery of Western Europe into one which was able to send out military expeditions to conquer lands on the other side of the globe. After a century of explorations, the Portuguese now began to assemble a territorial empire which spanned the globe. 
This land empire had begun tentatively back in the early 15th century, when the Portuguese had conquered a number of cities in Morocco, beginning with Ceuta in 1415. As they progressed down the African coastline, a number of colonies were established on the islands they discovered, such as Madeira, the Azores and the Cape Verde Islands, as well as small trading posts on the African mainland. However, in these regions, the Portuguese would often acquire small bits of land and hold them against native peoples who did not have advanced militaries and who were unable to resist the Portuguese encroachments. From the early 16th century, that all changed. Once they reached India, individuals such as Da Gama and Albuquerque began wresting lands from major Muslim and Indian powers. A trading station was established at Calicut and at other cities in the 1500s. In 1506, the island of Socotra at the entrance to the Red Sea was conquered, and in 1510 they claimed the city of Goa in western India for the Portuguese crown. Then, following the discovery of the Spice Islands, numerous areas were conquered here in the decades that followed. The Portuguese Empire in the East even extended as far as a trading station in southern China at Macau. While all of this expansion in Asia was occurring, Portugal had also acquired a vast territory in the Americas. Although the Spanish had first discovered and claimed the New World in 1492, disputes quickly arose between the Spanish and the Portuguese over their respective spheres of influence in all of these newly discovered lands. Eventually, an agreement known as the Treaty of Tordesillas was brokered by Pope Alexander VI in 1494. This fixed a line along the meridian 370 leagues west of the Cape Verde Islands as the point of demarcation. Spain was granted everything to the west of this line, and Portugal was to have everything to the east. While the purpose of the Treaty of Tordesillas had been to largely grant Spain control of the Americas and Portugal control of the new trade and new routes in Africa and Asia, it was soon realised that an enormous portion of South America lay east of the agreed line. This region, approximating roughly with modern-day Brazil, thus passed into Portuguese control. Although it would be many years before the Portuguese began to effectively settle this region and benefit from it, the Treaty of Tordesillas ensured that the growing Portuguese empire included a huge landmass in South America, as well as the many territories along the African coast and east into India and the Moluccas. This would be the heyday of the Portuguese empire but two events gradually led to the decline of Portuguese power over the next century. One was the loss of the country's independence when in 1578 King Sebastian I of Portugal led a quasi-religious expedition to Morocco against the Muslim powers there. Sebastian's forces were decimated shortly after their arrival at the Battle of Alcazar and he himself was killed. Without an heir, the Kingdom of Portugal was plunged into a succession crisis which was exploited in 1580 by King Philip II of Spain. Philip invaded Portugal in 1580 and effectively made the country a vassal of Spain. This situation would last for well over half a century, and as it did, the Portuguese Empire effectively became an appendage of the Spanish Empire. The second development, which led to the reduction of Portuguese imperial power, was the entry of several other European countries into the colonial race from the late 16th century onwards. In particular, the Dutch Republic began to attack Portuguese interests in Brazil, India and the Moluccas. This was largely a way for the Dutch to attack Spain by proxy, as the Dutch were involved in an 80-year war of independence between 1568 and 1648 with the Spanish Habsburg. As a result, by the early 17th century, the Dutch were displacing the Portuguese as the dominant European colonial power in the Spice Islands, although Portugal successfully resisted Dutch encroachments into Brazil. Portugal's possessions in India were largely lost in an effort to acquire an ally against the Spanish in the mid-17th century. The Portuguese had rebelled against Spanish overlordship in the early 1640s and had been fighting a long war of independence for nearly 20 years when in 1661 the Portuguese claimant to the Portuguese throne, King John IV, married his sister Catherine to King Charles II of England. This brought Portugal an ally against the Spanish, but in return John granted the Portuguese colony of Bombay in India to the English. It was the beginning of the end of Portuguese involvement in India and one of the first major steps in England's eventual conquest of the Indian subcontinent. While the dizzying heights of the 16th century, when a small Iberian kingdom had ruled a global empire, were behind Portugal by the 18th century, it still retained control of a significant overseas empire, which Brazil now became the focus of. In 1693, large gold mines were found at Minas Gerais and in the 18th century, hundreds of thousands of Portuguese settlers arrived in Brazil. More disconcertingly, the country became the centre of the global slave trade, of the approximately 12.5 million African slaves forcibly brought to the Americas between the 16th and 19th century, nearly half of them were brought over by the Portuguese 
to Brazil. Brazil became integral to Portuguese power and even identity in much the same way as Algeria would become for France in the 20th century. More than a colony, it was viewed almost as an overseas extension of the home country. Thus, it was that when Napoleon Bonaparte invaded and occupied Portugal in 1808, the Portuguese royal court and government relocated to Brazil, where it established a government in exile for the remainder of the Napoleonic Wars. However, the connection would not last much longer. Inspired by similar independence movements across Spanish America in the 1810s, in 1822, an independent empire of Brazil was formed bringing Portuguese involvement there to an end. However, there was one final episode. The dawning of the first age of globalization in the second half of the 19th century saw the European powers scramble to acquire chunks of Africa, which were now accessible for the first time. Portugal got in on the act, converting its small trading posts and enclaves towards southern Africa into the major blocks of land which make up Angola and Mozambique. Ambitions were even entertained in Lisbon to seize the territory in between these two colonies and form one continuous colony running all the way west to east across Africa. But this pink map strategy was foiled by the British in the 1890s, as they seized the interior and formed the colony of Rhodesia there. In the aftermath of the Second World War, calls for decolonization in Africa abounded, and in the late 1950s and early 1960s, France and Britain granted independence to a huge number of new countries across the continent. The Portuguese, under the dictatorship of Antonio de Oliveira Salazar, resisted such calls, leading to two long wars of independence in Angola and Mozambique, beginning in the early 1960s. These were only finally concluded in 1974 when the Carnation Revolution in Portugal led to the downfall of the Estado Novo regime there, at which point Lisbon ceased resisting the insurgents in both of its colonies and granted Angola and Mozambique independence. With the loss of Angola and Mozambique in 1974, and the declaration of independence by East Timor in the East Indies a year later, Portugal's empire effectively came to an end over half a millennium after colonists first started arriving to Madeira and the Azores. It was one of the most unusual empires ever constructed, one in which a poor Iberian kingdom of not much more than a million people in 1500 came to rule a span of territory more than a hundred times larger than mainland Portugal, and stretching from the Amazon rainforest through southern Africa and the Indian mainland to the East Indies and southeastern China. You have been watching the History Chronicles. We'd love to know what you think of the Portuguese Empire. Please let us know below, and if you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Also, if you'd like to support our work going forward, please visit our Patreon page, and we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the History Chronicles.